So I just wanted to show real quickly how it is that we use a uh, TDR to measure very small values of inductance and capacitance. This is a really handy tool for us uh, because we make probes. So the way that we measure the probe tip inductance and capacitance is using a TDR. And we can also measure things like the uh, ESL series inductance of a blocking capacitor on something like a Surtees channel. An easy way to measure that very small um, inductance is also using a TDR. So if we take a look, I have three traces on the screen now. And the top one is the actual voltage from the pulse generator. And the pulse generator connects to a 6 dB power divider. It's a minus 500 millivolt ECL pulse generator. And because of the 6 dB attenuator, we're seeing uh, minus 250 millivolts. Uh, most TDRs uh, display the reflection coefficient gamma. And here we're using a math function to calculate that. We get that math function by rescaling the pulse generator to uh, get the zero level, which is off screen here, but it's about zero volts, and the uh, uh, low level, which is about minus 250 millivolts, and we scale that to be two volts peak to peak, and then we make the 50 ohm uh, match point a reflection coefficient of zero. And we can actually see that here if we just rescale this uh, waveform. Now you can see on the plus side it's zero. And if I make this uh, time base a little different, now you can see here's the reflection coefficient goes from minus one to plus one. Here's the pulse generator goes from zero to uh, minus 250 millivolts. This line in the middle of the plateau, this is the, the matched region. And that's because we happen to be connected to a 50 ohm cable. So there's the cable. This uh, 50 ohm pedestal, that's the, the adapter. But anyway, there's our cable, and at the end of the cable, we have our probe. And so that's what we're seeing in those traces. And of course, what we're interested in is uh, moving our reference level to over on the edge here. And one thing I'd like to point out is that we don't really need all these traces, right? So it's a lot of data, but it tends to hide the things that, that we want to see. We don't really need to see the voltage pulse. And we're not actually measuring characteristic impedance, so we don't really need to see that one either. And that's a, a math function, so we can turn that off. We don't want to delete the math, we just want to turn it off. And now we can see the uh, reflection coefficient much more clearly. We also have two other equations. One here takes the integral of this reflection coefficient and divides it by half of the uh, reference impedance, which is 50 ohms. So, so we divide by 25, and that gives us the capacitance of a negative going blip. There's a similar equation here that integrates the reflection coefficient and multiplies it by twice the reference impedance of 50 ohms. So here it's multiplied by 100, and that's how we get the inductance from a positive blip. Now the math is always here, and so it shows up in a measurement function on the right side of the screen. Uh, the instrument doesn't have software that tells us how to discern between a, a capacitor and an inductor, though we know that capacitors are negative blips and inductors are positive blips. And yes, we probably could code that into the scope. Um, so, but they're both going to display here. We set these up as gated cursor functions so we can turn on a cursor. And if we look at these measurement functions, you can see they're gated and the gating is the cursor. So what it's going to do is evaluate the uh, value of the integral equations only between the cursors. So if we take a look at this first board, I have three demo boards here. This one has a 500 femtofarad capacitor uh, mounted to the middle of it, about the middle. And here we can zoom in on it a bit. And there you can see the positive blip on the left side. That's the inductance of this probe tip. We'll come back and we'll measure that a little bit later. And here is the uh, negative going blip. That's our capacitor. We want to kind of set the cursors typically um, about the steady state level. Sorry, I moved there. And that tells us that we got about 650, 660 femtofarads. That's actually uh, pretty good because the 500 femtofarad cap is plus or minus 200 femtofarads. And of course, you have my fancy soldering on here that, that could make it off by even more than that. Uh, but we can very clearly see that 
negative going blip. You can also see that it's relatively clean on each side. There are reflections coming from that measurement, but that's because I put a 50 ohm lead in trace and lead out trace. I have nice clean regions just before and just after the measurement. Um, but that's how we can measure that capacitance. We just put the reflection coefficient on the screen. We put the cursors at the two edges and we can measure it. Now I said we use this to measure the inductance of our probe tips. And so we could do that here also, set it to the steady state values approximately. And that tells us that the inductance of this probe tip is about 550 picohenries. That's an important number because when that equals 50 ohms, um, that is the bandwidth set limitation due to uh, the pins. So we measured a 500 femtofarad cap, measured a 500 picohenry inductor. In the second trace, we actually cut the, the center trace and then we soldered a capacitor across it. So it's, it's a series mounted DC block like you might see in your Surtees channels, right? Those are often AC coupled and the inductance of that capacitor also gets into the high speed circuit. So we could measure that also. And here you can see that is a uh, positive going blip. And it's positive going blip because positive going blips are inductors. And so let's just move the cursors to before and after that uh, capacitor. And you can see our little capacitor has a uh, ESL of approximately, oh, maybe 150 or 200, uh, 150, 200 picohenries. We could average that a little bit better if we wanted to because it does bounce around a little bit. We can also maybe get a little bit more resolution in it. Uh, but there you go, it's going to average out around 120 picohenries. And then one more trace. This one I mounted a 3.3 picofarad capacitor between the center conductor and ground. And now you can see that's a ginormous blip. Negative direction tells us that it's a capacitor. Let me just put these on the right sides. And there you go, our 3.3 picofarad capacitor measures about 2.9 picofarads. And again, it's not perfect, but it's well within the tolerances of the uh, capacitor. And again, there's the inductance of our probe tip. And of course, if we used different tips, we'll get different answers. Let me see if I have one here. This one has uh, nice long tips. Oh, that's not a good one. Now, this one has a bigger pitch, so a bigger pitch should get us higher inductance connection. And there you can see the higher inductance there. In fact, you can see it's almost rectangular looking. So there's really two artifacts that are in adjacent to each other, but you can see that's much higher inductance at around one nanometer. Anyway, that's how we measure our probes and that's how we measure really small values of capacitors and inductors using the reflection coefficient from a high-speed pulse generator TDR. Here we're using the J2151, but you can use any uh, TDR high-speed pulse generator that has a matching power divider. Um, I hope you found that interesting.